Welcome sa ating channel mga kaibigan We are here for the first initial review ng ating 12900K With of course the media kit na pinadala sa atin ni Asus The Z690 Hero Wi-Fi So yun po yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon Pero i-isolate ko muna sa ating benchmark about sa mga programs used for production So that will be the Adobe Premiere and the Adobe Photoshop At the same time programs that will be most likely used by architects and engineers And then, syempre, we will start it with Cinebench. So, hindi ko na po papatagalin yung intro. Let's do this. And for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. This video is brought to you by SCDKey, the best website that you may visit in terms of uh, very affordable deals and best offer para sa application softwares, games, and yes, operating system. And there you are. You may check the Windows 10 Pro. And by using our promo code, Ma-avail mo lang siya ng around $14.95 or 700 plus pesos. That's it mga kaibigan. Check the description below. May mga links po tayo dyan to go directly sa kanilang website. To start with, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, it's just more into production review. So, ang gagawin natin is hindi muna natin isasama yung mga gaming benchmark, uh, power-related benchmark that will be for the next video by tomorrow and the following day. So that is a series of uh, videos about Intel 12 Gen until November 10. Yun po yung pinaka last day natin na magre-review ng 12900K for a PC build naman and i-include na po natin doon yung mga AMD counterpart na comparison. Now, let's go back to the topic. 12900K, how will it perform compared sa 10900? Is it really a big leap? compared sa 14 nanometer na ilang beses na refresh until 11th gen. Now we have the 12th gen. Finally, Intel is going for a new architecture pero it's not that only thing na improve nila for the 10 nanometer or for the Intel 12th gen or Alder Lake. Marami pa po. And yan is makakakover po natin yan sa mga susunod na ating mga videos. Ang focus lang po muna natin ngayon is yung kanyang production or yung kanyang capability. And here is the Cinebench benchmark in multi-core and single-core. Makikita nyo po dyan mga kaibigan that it's too far. Pagdating sa numbers, that will uh, give you uh, quite 100% difference almost for the multi-core. And then pagdating naman po sa ating uh, uh, single-core, medyo minimal lang po yung naging uh, difference. Yun nga lang po, it's not really an apple-to-apple -apple comparison kasi nga we have only the 10900, the locked variant ng i9 10 gen since wala po tayong 10900K. Pero it's quite good enough uh, comparison dahil nga po, it's still an Intel Core i9 from the 14 nanometer variant. Uh, it's still close since default or stock settings lang po muna yung mga ginawa natin. We didn't do overclocking. And is it really something that will really deliver pagdating naman sa real-world performance? Now, let's go with Adobe applications. So, the first application na gagamitin po natin is the Photoshop with the testing methodology of Puget Systems. I think this is quite one of the standard because this will give you a preview of the overall experience, not only about the rendering side. Since, uh, yun nga, tulad na sinabi natin sa mga previous video, rendering is just one part of the process. And uh, sometimes... It's just a metric that uh, may even uh, mislead us. Dahil nga po dito, makikita nyo po that here is the benchmark ng 12900K. A big leap pagdating sa performance over the 10900 or over those 14 nanometer processors that uh, nandun na, na or nandito na sa ating market for a while since uh, 5 years ago. And we are very glad to see that 12900K or the 12 gen represented by the 12900K, makikita natin dito na sobrang layo po ng performance. So if you are in a Photoshop editor or you are into production, into graphic artist, ito po is uh, isang major leap. Let's check naman yung Premiere. And here is the score. It's quite not very big difference compared sa ating uh, Photoshop. Pero at least, it's still a major leap. That number, pagdating sa difference ng score, ng uh, Premiere, kung i-compare natin sa mga iba pa nating mga reviews dati, it's already big and mas ma-appreciate pa natin siguro when uh, maglalabas uh, si Intel or yung mga motherboards ng new BIOS at the same time magkakaroon ng updates pagdating sa Windows, 
mas ma-optimize pa ang ating 12900K. And that will be something that we will find out soon when we will do a deeper review of the 12900K pagdating sa production. Now, let's move on naman sa isa sa mga application na most likely engineers or uh, architects may use the Blender 3D. So, the CPU benchmark is uh, not really one of the biggest uh, reason why you should consider uh, processor pagdating sa architecture and uh, engineering dahil on, in most cases, they will still prefer na gamitin yung GPU for rendering uh, purposes. Pero for the sake of comparison and for the sake of difference, tingnan natin yung 12900K over the 10900. And here, 8 minutes for the 10900. But with the 12900K, we just managed to render the project in 6 minutes. That 2 minutes difference, if we will scale up as usual na sinasabi ko dito, engineers and architects renders project for 8 hours, 6 hours, especially kung mga large-scale project, sobrang layo na nun. I-multiply mo lang siya kung 8 hours or 6 hours yung project. Like 8 hours yung project na i-render mo sa 10900. And if you have 12900K, that will just be rendered in 6 hours. Sobrang layong difference. 2 hours difference earlier to present a project. Now, sorry if I will end it here. Dahil, uh, syempre, medyo nasa probinsya kasi tayo, medyo mas nahuli po nating na-receive itong mga items, itong mga hardware. Actually, we have the benchmarks. Here is uh, the proof. We have lots of data, pero I don't want that this data may mislead you dahil ang dami ko pang gagawin. Kailangan namin ulitin yung uh, uh, test just to be sure na hindi kami maging, uh, kumbaga, may mislead you or misinform you. So, uh, by tomorrow, keep posted. Dahil susundan po namin kaagad ng isa pang uh, benchmark video ang ating first or initial review of the 12900K. Pero at least as of now, you have the idea that it is really worth it. Na kahit kaka-upgrade mo lang ng 10900, 10th gen, 11th gen, you should consider going for a 12th gen processor. Sinasabi ko po sa inyo, and it's this is the point where you may think na, Yes, inaabangan namin yung 12th gen dahil para mas magmura yung 10th gen, 11th gen. I think it's not worth it to do that. You should skip those processors. Those are just refresh processors from Intel. Na hindi, parang AMD lang din yan. Na abangan mo ngayon yung 5000 series para magmura yung uh, 3000 series. Kasi konti lang naman yung difference. Pag you overclock mo yung 3000 series, you will have a closer uh, benchmark over the 5000 series. Especially if uh, you will be going for the 1440p gaming. Yan po yung aabangan ninyo mga kaibigan. How will be the performance of 12900K in 1080p gaming? Pero I will also give you a preview of the 1440p gaming on this channel. So keep posted. By tomorrow, we have another video again of the 12900K pagdating naman po sa gaming. That's it for our initial review. Keep posted and thank you so much.